to this computer. All right. Okay, so this is um, our presentation for maternal and fetal demise due to external sources by uh, myself, Jazzy, Rebecca, Destiny, and Anna. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca, and I'm gonna be talking about a few external sources that can negatively affect a woman's pregnancy. Um, this can include affecting the health of the mother and the developing fetus. In our presentation, we're going to discuss three common external stressors with negative effects on pregnancy, as well as who, how, how to avoid them and maintain a healthy pregnancy. So some chemicals can circulate in the mother's blood and they pass through the placenta. So this will reach the developing fetus. Harmful agents can affect the overall health of the woman and reduce the delivery of nutrients to the baby. Here are a few things to avoid in pregnancy and they've been linked to preterm labor. Um, we should avoid ex exposure to toxic substances that may be in the home or the workplace, such as lead and mercury. We should use latex paint in a well-ventilated area. If you're painting while pregnant, don't ever use an oil-based paint. You should avoid paint thinners. Um, considering us using de vegetable derived dyes as alternative to hair dyes if you're dyeing your hair. Avoid any toxic cleaners with harsh fumes, lawn chemicals, weed killers, and make sure you're washing fruits and vegetables before eating them. Um, you should avoid having medical and dental x-rays or CT scans while you're pregnant. The radiation can pass directly through the mother's body and this will affect the baby. You should avoid hot tubs and you should, pregnant women should, should take risks, take excuse me, take steps to minimize their risk to exposure of chemicals. Um, they should avoid eating and drinking from tableware, bottles made of polycarbonate plastic. In the next slide, I'm gonna talk about different types of infection. The increase, increased, risk, increased risk of these infections during pregnancy is now well understood, but it could be due to the hormone and other changes that alter the number of blood cells in the mother's body. In, Late pregnancy T cells that help fight infection decrease in number. So this could be why pregnant women are affected. Pregnancy also causes increased blood circulation and demands on the heart. These demands can worsen complications. For example, if a pregnant woman develops pneumonia from the flu, they could have difficulty breathing because of the increased demands of the fetus. Um, infections with detrimental effects against pregnancy include flu, listeria, HIV, and measles. Reachers have uh, identified a certain lifestyle factors that make it more likely for a woman to have a normal and successful pregnancy. Some of these lifestyle factors include increasing your fruit intake before pregnancy, being a healthy weight throughout your pregnancy, reducing your blood pressure, stopping drug and alcohol misuse, and physical exercise is tolerated. Although there's a lot of work um, needed to determine whether or not these associations have more importance, it implies that these interventions encourage women to maintain a healthy pregnancy. Hi, I'm Destiny, and I'm going to be talking about promoting a healthy pregnancy. So basically everything Rebecca said, but now how we can um, transform these things into call, letting you have a good pregnancy. So the first thing we're going to talk about is hand hygiene to avoid illnesses. And then we're going to talk about participating in physical activity and avoiding external stressors. Okay, so the first thing you could do, um, you can avoid infections by practicing hand hygiene. Um, and tips for that would just be to use warm water and um, soap for 15 to 20 seconds when you're washing your hands. And you want to wash your hands frequently, um, especially when you come in, in contact with a lot of things. If you don't have, a, if you're not near a sink or anything like that, then alcohol-based hand rubs are also good. Um, you should wash your hands frequently, more so before or after you're handling food, um, when your hands are clearly soiled and dirt, uh, such as like if you're gardening or anything like that, before or after going to the bathroom, and if you come in contact with another person's body fluid or saliva or even yours, so after you blow your nose or anything like that, then you want to make sure you wash those germs off. 
So next, another important thing that comes with pregnancy is making sure that you're physically active. Um, this can help both you and your baby. So if your pregnancy is normal and your doctor hasn't told you you're high risk or anything like that, it's usually safe to go ahead and to continue to exercise if you've been exercising or you can go ahead and start. Um, but you always, always, always want to discuss it with your doctor first. Uh, a lot of people think that physical activity might increase your risk for miscarriage or losing your baby or even developing um, or even having an early delivery. I'm sorry, but uh, that's not the case. It's usually more helpful than it is harmful. And researchers recommend at least 30 minutes of moderate to intensity um, exercises all week. If not all week, then, you know, at least six days out the week. Um, but you want to be safe when you are doing these exercises. Some benefits could be like reducing back pain. It boosts your energy. Uh, you fight fatigue. It improves your sleep and a couple of other things. So overall, physical activity is really great during pregnancy. All right, and lastly, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure you avoid external stressors. So research shows that prenatal stress can have significant effects on the pregnancy, maternal health, and human development across the lifespan. So some common external stressors will be like if you have other children or a big one during COVID is family. We always with our family, that can sometimes be stressful. Um, if you're too busy, uh, financial worries, relationship difficulties, work or school, which we're all in nursing school, and also major life changes. So that could be, you just lost your house, you just lost your, lost your job, a loved one. Any major life change um, can affect your baby. And it doesn't have to always be bad. It can also be positive stressors too, but they do affect the babies. Um, pregnancy and birth complications associated with prenatal stress include preterm labor, preterm delivery, um, your baby having a low birth weight, low fat weight, uh, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and et cetera. And one fun fact that I do love um, as information to share is that your baby is exposed to everything you experience. So when you're sad, your baby feels that. If you're happy, you're creating a, a happy environment for your baby. So don't forget to breathe and relax. Hi, my name is Anna. Um, so the next thing that we'll talk about is smoking during pregnancy and how that can affect the, um, the mom and the baby. Um, it's known to be harmful to both the mom and the baby. Um, so some things that can contribute to that um, while you're smoking, it can help to um, increase the chances of preterm labor um, any birth defects, like placenta problems, such as an abruption of your placenta. Um, it can also help to, to uh, promote a miscarriage or stillbirth for the baby. Um, it's generally recommended not to smoke um, and avoid secondhand and thirdhand smoke when you're pregnant. Um, if you are a smoker um, and you're, you, you do find out that you're pregnant, you should quit as soon as possible just to um, avoid any of these problems. So then the next one is drugs during pregnancy. Um, one in 20 women actually are uh, found to take street drugs during pregnancy. Problems that can occur during pregnancy while using street drugs can include preterm labor again, uh, miscarriage, premature birth, stillbirth, heart and birth defects and infections like hepatitis C can all be found um, at birth and during the pregnancy while taking street drugs. Um, again, it's generally recommended not to take drugs during pregnancy, but if you are already a, consist a consistent user, um, it's important to meet with a healthcare provider um, so that they can help you safely quit. So that way you're not just quitting what they say a cold turkey, because it can actually cause a miscarriage and even more problems for the baby itself. Um, I'm Javi, as I said earlier, and I'm basically going to be talking about um, fetal abnormalities that can cause um, death. And this is both related to genetic defects or abnormalities that are seen um, while, like during pregnancy or uh, post-birth, um, external effector, uh, stressors affecting fetal progression and complications at birth, so like natural um, birth or in C-section. 
Um, so this is just a really good quote that I found. Um, the risk of fetal loss differs by both maternal and fetal characteristics and cause of fetal death can provide additional insight into why fetuses die. Um, so there are some genetic defects and abnormalities that can be known prior um, to birth or right at birth. Um, these complications can cause issues for mother. And so, um, especially if knowing this or while you're pregnant, um, this can all be related to indirect stressors of the mother as well as the lifestyle. Some indirect stressors can be um, things that the mother can't control. So age, race, um, sex. So like if a, if a mom is transgender, um, her past medical history, prior pregnancies, um, and her lifestyle can include, you know, her health, her diet, um, her BMI, or whether she has had any prior terminations or abortions, because um, this can also affect her um, future pregnancies. So um, genetic defects mainly, in call, uh, mainly involve genes, and this can be um, seen with genetic testing. So you can have genetic testing done to see um, the validity of your pregnancy and whether like your child has a chance to um, prosper outside the womb or if it's going to cause you problems like during your pregnancy, giving you a high risk pregnancy, um, or could even potentially cause death for both mom and baby. Um, so this is a big risk for mothers and a lot of mothers tend to do genetic testing. This is something that you should talk to your healthcare provider of about if this is um, something you're worried about, if you have a family history, of certain diseases or defects, and you want to know the chances of your pregnancy containing these certain defects, um, it's a good that's a good talk to have with your primary care provider to see what your options are best for. Um, so maternal stressors affecting pregnancy. It's similar to what has already been stated. So um, all of the you know risk for infection, um, mom's age, her past medical history, her prior surgeries. Um, some external factors are her recreation. So if she smokes, does drugs, if she's drinking during pregnancy, this all affects not only mom, but also baby in this situation. So um, there's things, there's diseases called like fetal alcohol syndrome, where it's um, a baby can be born basically in withdrawal of alcohol. Um, there's been babies that have been known to um, be born already addicted to certain um, recreational drugs, so like heroin, meth, and they have to go through a detox period, which is all very taxing on a tiny body. Um, and this can also cause fetal demise within the womb if um, taken in high quantities. So if these are stressors that mom is facing, it's very, very important that she not only gets the help for herself um, and weans herself off of it, because as Anna stated previously, Quitting cold turkey is not good for either mom and baby, but um, ultimately weaning yourself off of it can cause, um, I mean, can just be a very big relief uh, within your pregnancy. And um, without a healthy environment, baby can't prosper. So a toxic wound, a toxic womb can lead to early labor and delivery um, before baby is able to sustain life independently from mom. So uh, I think. Destiny said this before in one of her fun facts where um, just, you know, relax and breathe because if you're creating a toxic environment for your baby inside of yourself, um, it could cause a lot of problems. Um, even elevated stress can be a big deal for a baby and could potentially cause um, fetal demise. Complications at birth. So these are a little bit harder to prevent. However, we now have more protocols in place in the hospital setting. Um, to kind of bypass these complications. So whether it's a natural birth or cesarean section, some fetus affected complications um, can be due to the placenta cord or the membrane. So um, it could be the, the placenta being wrapped around the baby's neck, um, the cord actually detaching, or um, if the mom's water has broken, 12 or more hours before and baby still hasn't progressed, like labor hasn't progressed and baby hasn't been born, that is a very, very high risk um, chance of the baby um, not getting enough oxygen, 
having a lot of brain damage and can, act, can actually cause a lot of infection um, for the baby when they are actually born. So some fetus affected by maternal complications. So again, maternal complications like the stressors that we've already talked about and congenital malformations, deformations, and chromosomal abnormalities. These are basically big words to say like genetic defects, birth defects, or formation um, or deformations known prior to birth and at birth. Um, and fetus affected by maternal conditions um, may be related to present pregnancy. So basically, if you've had complications at birth and prior pregnancies, um, your likelihood of having complications at your next pregnancy are even more higher, uh, as well as having a high risk pregnancy where you have um, just more complications throughout your pregnancy. You could have um, gestational diabetes, you could have um, the baby could have a low heart rate or be in distress um, or potentially even baby being stuck in the birth canal, which are all very, very, very big complications, but um, within the right care setting can be easily resolved without issue and without too much complication to mom or baby. So these are our references. Um, um, we actually have our brochure here um, that kind of just consolidates all of our information that we talked about. So we have smoking as Anna talked about um, and what it can do during pregnancy. We also have a section of air pollution, which not a lot of people talk about. Um, we have some statistics and other external stressors. Um, race and ethnicity also play an important role. Um, I think, um, where's the statistic that I have? Um, Hispanic mothers are 20% have a higher, have a 20% chance higher of having a high risk um, pregnancy and birth, which is very scary to think about. Um, and then I will share my screen here. For our newsletter, which is um, just some other ways that we can prevent um, risk of infection. So washing our hands, um, how to wash our hands and how clean hands keep, or clean hands are safe hands. So yeah, that is our presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Bye.